Hey everyone, welcome to 59 Tops Friday presented by Wax Pack Wisdom, where we talk baseball history through the cards we love. My name is Jake T. O'Donnell. We built the iconic 1959 Tops baseball set, and in this series we're going through every card to talk about the players, teams, and people who made up Major League Baseball in 1959. Today, we'll cover cards 172 through 179 in the set. Card number 172 is the Kansas City A's Team Checklist. The checklist covers cards 177 through 242 in the set. After the 1954 season, the Philadelphia A's were sold by Hall of Famer Connie Mack and his family to a Chicago industrialist named Arnold Johnson. Johnson immediately filed for the team to be moved to Kansas City for 1955, and the A's left Philly after 54 years. The team would play in the Midwest for 13 seasons, and they did not have a winning record in any of them before going to Oakland. The best year for the A's in Kansas City was 1958, when they won 73 games behind Bob Serve's 38 home runs and additional power from a midseason acquisition named Roger Maris. Still, the A's finished second to last in the AL. In 1959, they finished in the same position with 66 wins. Maris had a good season, but was then traded to the Yankees, where he'd etch his name in the history books. One notable fact about the 1959 A's is that two future Hall of Fame managers played on the club. Whitey Herzog, who won the 1982 World Series with the Cardinals, and Dick Williams, who won back-to-back -back World Series for the A's in Oakland in 1972 and 1973. Card number 173 belongs to Bill Monbouquet of the Boston Red Sox. 1959 was his second year in the big leagues. He was a right-handed pitcher who signed with the Red Sox in 1955 and premiered in the big leagues on July 18, 1958. Monbouquet grew up a few miles from Fenway Park. He split his time between the Red Sox, Tigers, Yankees, and Giants. He made the AL All-Star team in 1960, 1962, and 1963. Notably, Monbouquet threw a no-hitter against the White Sox in 1962, allowing only one base runner on a walk during that game. Monbouquet also had two one-hitters and set a Red Sox record with a 17 strikeout game, a record that stood until Roger Clemens broke it in 1986. In the year 2000, he was inducted into the Red Sox Hall of Fame. If a fan ever asked Mon Bouquet for an autograph, they were surprised to learn that the man who pitched and batted right-handed used his left hand for writing. Mon Bouquet remained active in the major leagues as a coach for multiple teams, and he died in 2015 at the age of 78. Card number 174 belongs to Jim Pendleton of the Pittsburgh Pirates. 1959 was his ninth year in the big leagues, including one Negro League season with the Chicago American Giants. Pendleton got his start in baseball as a right-handed outfielder in the Negro Minor League in Asheville. Pendleton was promoted to the Negro American League in 1948 and then made his major league debut in 1953. Pendleton spent his time between the Braves, Pirates, Reds, and Houston Colt 45s. He passed away in 1996 at the age of 72. Card number 175 belongs to Dick Farrell of the Philadelphia Phillies. 1959 was Farrell's fourth MLB season. Nicknamed Turk, Farrell was signed out of the Boston area by the Phillies before the 1953 season. He debuted in 1956 for the Phils and became a regular part of their bullpen the following year. Farrell was an NL All-Star in 1958, finishing off 35 games for the Phillies with 11 saves. He was traded to the Dodgers midway through 1961, and then was traded again to Houston for 1962. In Houston, he became a swingman and again was an All-Star in 1962 with a 3.02 ERA in 241 and two-thirds innings. A steady presence for the team that eventually became the Astros, Farrell was again an All-Star in 1964 and 1965. The Phillies acquired him again in 1967, and he pitched two more seasons there. He attempted to latch on with the Braves in 1970, but did not appear in a game for them. All told, Farrell tossed over 1,700 career innings, over 14 MLB seasons. 
Card number 176 belongs to Preston Ward of the Kansas City Athletics. 1959 was Ward's ninth and final season in the majors. He signed with the Dodgers out of Missouri as a teenager and first appeared in the majors for Brooklyn in 1948. In 1949, he was traded to the Cubs, where he briefly played in 1950. Ward missed two full seasons serving in the Korean War, and shortly after his return to the Cubs in 1953, he was traded to the Pirates as part of a larger deal that also sent Hall of Fame slugger Ralph Kiner to Chicago. Throughout his career, Ward was a light-hitting reserve first baseman who could also play third base in all three outfield positions. Ward also appeared in games for Cleveland and Kansas City, and also went with Roger Maris in the 1958 trade between those two clubs. Card number 177 belongs to Johnny Briggs of the Chicago Cubs. This was Briggs's fourth MLB season, and he actually spent it with the Cleveland Indians, not the Cubs. Briggs originally was signed by the Phillies after starring as an amateur in California. He was dealt to the Cubs after the 1955 season. Briggs briefly pitched in Chicago in 1956 and 1957, gaining more of a foothold in 1958 when he made 17 starts for the Northsiders. As noted on the back of the card, in January 1959, Briggs was part of a trade with the Indians. He pitched in four games there in 1959, then 29 in 1960, before the A's acquired him for cash. His final eight MLB appearances were that year with the A's. They dealt Briggs to the Reds ahead of 1961, but he never actually pitched for Cincy. Card number 178 belongs to Ruben Amaro of the Philadelphia Phillies. 1959 would have been his second year in the majors, but he only played in the minors that year. Signed by the Cardinals out of Mexico, he debuted for the Redbirds in 1958, appearing in 40 games, mostly at shortstop. Amaro spent the 1959 season in the minors after he was traded to the Phillies. He emerged as the Phillies starting shortstop in 1960, and while he never hit much, he was an excellent defender. Amaro won the 1964 National League Gold Glove Award for his shortstop play. Amaro was traded to the Yankees for 1966, and he played parts of three seasons there. His last year in the majors was 1969 with the Angels. Amaro's son, Ruben Jr., played eight seasons in the big leagues in the 1990s and was later the general manager of the Phillies. Card number 179 belongs to Don Rudolph of the Chicago White Sox. 1959 was Rudolph's third major league season. Rudolph did not get much big league action for the first three years of his MLB career, spanning time with the White Sox and the Red Legs following a trade there during the 1959 season. He was out of the majors for two years and then returned in 1962, first briefly with the Indians and then with the expansion Washington Senators, where he became a mainstay in their rotation through 1964. Rudolph pitched over 170 innings for the Senators in both 1962 and 1963. The next year was his last in the big leagues. Rudolph's baseball career was somewhat overshadowed by his wife, Patty, who was a famous professional burlesque dancer. That's going to do it for this edition of 59 Tops Friday on Wax Pack Wisdom. Today's episode was written by Abby O'Donnell and Jake T. O'Donnell. Do you have a story about one of the people, players, or teams we discussed today? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our Wax Pack Wisdom content. In the video description, you will find our source material for this episode, links to where you can follow us on all social media channels, as well as a list of our favorite nonprofits and charities. Please consider a donation to one of them if you enjoyed this content. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Wax Pack Wisdom. Take care.